welcome back to a new episode of What's New Candy Lou Who? And today I am super excited because I will be talking to something that is recently become very near and dear to my heart, and that is yoga and meditation. <laughs> so for those of you who know me, and I guess just to fill in the people that might not have known me for the past couple years, I have always been a very active person. I did every type of sport pretty much growing up. And before I moved to Denmark, when I was in Austin, it's a very active lifestyle there. So I was doing like boot camps and running, doing my soul cycle classes. I've always been someone who's really appreciated kind of cardio and like hard heating stuff. But I kind of was looking for a little bit of a shift. So when we first moved back to Denmark, or I guess I moved to Denmark and Oscar moved back, uh, we were staying with Oscar's family, which was awesome, but I didn't have the same access to like boot camp or a gym or anything like that. And plus, I just wanted to kind of relax. It was my first time that I could remember in my life that I had about three months where I wasn't working, I wasn't in school, I was kind of forced to just not really do anything. So while I was taking this time to kind of just sit and reflect and kind of figure out how I wanted to live my life in Denmark or how I wanted to set up, you know, my next two plus years that I'd be in Denmark. And one of the things I always thought when I was, you know, busy, busy running around for the past couple of years, I was just like, I want that type of lifestyle where I can just wake up in the morning and have my tea and just do yoga and like center myself and just get ready for the day. I want less stress in my life. I want to be more mindful. I just want to be in tune. You're very in tune. Anyway, I decided that I was like, I want to have that type of lifestyle. And I thought, you know, no better way or no better time to start that than now. And it starts right now. <laughs> So I had this wish to start yoga and I really didn't start my practice until we ended up in Aarhus and kind of had a little bit more space and, and more room and I was feeling a little bit more settled. But in addition to feeling a little bit more settled, I felt so much more disconnected with myself and dissociated with myself and just kind of lost and coming to a new place where I couldn't understand the language. I had, you know, Oscar luckily, but I was totally kind of uprooted and I had a whole new schedule. I was now going to be in school. I had been working for three and a half years almost. So it was a whole different shift and it was much harder than I thought. I can imagine it's pretty rough. And thankfully for my friend Nikki, who had originally sent me um, the link for the yoga that I do pretty much every day now, which is Yoga with Adrienne. Shout out to my girl, love her. Uh, she's actually Austin based and I am so upset that I never got to go with any of her classes when I was actually in Austin, it's horrible. Now I just feel like so blessed to have found that. So how I started, I decided I'm gonna give myself an hour every day. I called it my hour. How original. And it was my time to do the things that I felt like I needed to do to just feel better on a daily basis and to kind of connect with myself. So my hour consisted of yoga, meditation, and then dansk, my Danish practice, because that was also something I was obviously really trying to work for. So I kind of coupled those things in together, which is... Oh, here's a fun fact. A good tip if you're trying to start a new habit is to couple it with things that you're kind of already doing. Um, because it's more likely that you'll keep on doing it. I had that hour that I saved for myself every day and no matter what time, I tried to do all of those things together, but no matter what time, if I meditated in the morning and then did yoga at night and then did dansk uh, at the other times of the day, I just made sure I had that hour, at least an hour to myself, for myself. And so of course it was really hard to stick to that every day because you know, building a pattern, building a habit is hard. You've got to stick with it. But honestly, after the first couple weeks and then a few first months, it really just became a routine. And I would start if, you know, time would allow or my schedule would allow. I'd wake up in the morning and it just became second nature to roll out my mat, do my meditation, do my yoga, maybe take a break, have some coffee, and then do my Danish. And now I am have been doing this for a little bit over a year. and. It's just incredible to kind of look back and see all of the changes and notice all of the changes I've found in myself, in my point of view, in my lifestyle. And it's just amazing and insane, but 
so happy that I started it when I did. So let's get into the brass tacks. <laughs> let's get into it. How has yoga changed my life? We'll say, I can say that. How has yoga changed my life? One, let's start with the body. First, I, anybody who knows me, I used to do cheerleading, competitive cheerleading. And I was always, and I still stand by, I'm probably the most unflexible cheerleader that's ever done lived. I've never been flexible. I don't know how they even let me on the team. It was probably because I was the base. I was pretty strong. So flexibility was one thing that I always have wanted to work on. And being from like a cardio weights type of background, I had done yoga and I had done stretching just to like obviously take care of my body. But I've wanted to really, you know, just stretch out and kind of lean out and give my body a little bit more of that release. So doing yoga every day, I found that though it wasn't, I can't, I still can't do the splits that, I'm getting closer. I still can't do the splits, sure. But I, the flexibility, I can put my hands all the way down to the floor now. That was a goal for me for the first like few months and that was super exciting. Just my range of motion I've also found is so much better. I don't feel as achy as I had uh, for the past many, many years. Again, I did sports for all my life and cheer, the last sport I kind of ended with literally broke me. Just waking up in the morning and not feeling achy in my knees and in my joints was amazing. And I felt that after like two months of doing yoga. I gained this new sense of strength from yoga. And again, I've been doing weights and lifting and doing all this stuff. And I, on, I'm a naturally muscular person. I mean, like shout out to my dad. I totally got his physique. I am just a built person in general. So I would like bulk up real easy if I like looked at a weight. But with yoga, because you're working out only with your body weight, I felt this ease of working with my body rather than against it. And I feel like some workouts, even like your mindset when I was like pushing with cardio on the treadmill or doing weights, you're like, push your body, like do this. And it was so interesting to come into a workout and, and do a practice and do a session where I was working with my body and was able to modify it if it was, you know, a little bit too much. But after about, you know, four or five months, I felt this inner sense of strength where I felt solid, I felt stronger. And that feeling was so amazing and a better sense of strength rather than when I was, you know, watching my calories or my kgs um, and pounds and was, you know, so stressed about that. I just felt this inner strength, which was also leading to, I'll say my point three, of feeling so much like kind of sexier and confident in my own body. And it's not just those downward dogs when Oscar would like walk into the room and be like, whoa, what's going on here? I felt like I had a better sense of my body and how I moved and my dexterity. Um, I was also serving for my first few months when I was in Denmark. And I found like I moved around the tables a little bit better and I was swifter with like navigating spaces and moving through. I just had better control of my body and it was this elegance and I almost felt like a ballerina in some ways that was so nice to feel in tune with my body and that I was working with my body and not against it. Stop relying on that body. So there's obviously the physical benefits of yoga that people see and they're like, oh great, I'll have a lean body, whatever. Now I want to talk about the heart and the changes I kind of found within my heart space, as they call it in the yoga community. So what I found from regular yoga practice is I had more compassion and more patience for myself and for those around me. And it really just comes into the whole saying of like, you have to fill your own cup first in order to fill others. You know, you can't fill from an empty cup. So I think for the past many years, I've been filling other people's cups and I've been having drip drops in like my own. And it's exhausting and you're always just working at a disadvantage and you're always just working as a place of like trying to get out there. And I felt like I was just like doggy paddling for so many years of my life. I only dog paddle. And I've, after, you know, really five or six months and being in this environment that I was so uncomfortable with and so jarred with every day. I felt so much more grounded and more settled and more full. Like I felt like I was finally taking the time to fill my own cup. Fill up my cup. 
And I found that when my cup was full and almost overflowing with gratitude and compassion and patience, I was able to take that out into the world and really put my best foot forward into everything I was doing, whether it be work or school or making new you know, friends and connections and managing those relationships while I was here. I had so much more energy to do that and I was more mindful in all of those things I was doing. And this is all just coming from taking like 30 minutes to myself every day to center and think about why I'm thinking certain things and notice why I feel certain things and not just reacting, um, not being very reactive, but being a little bit more proactive. Also one of the seven habits of highly effective people. I'll also count this as a change in my heart, but I was so or I found that I'm so much more open to experiences, good and bad. This is, you know, absolutely with yoga and meditation, but you learn to just kind of roll with the punches and not just that, but just like to go with the flow. There's times in your life that you need to like push and push through boundaries and, you know, go against the tide. But there's times where I would find that would just be on autopilot and I always felt like I needed to be challenged. I always felt like things needed to be hard for them to be worth it or for them to be good. And sometimes that is literally just running yourself into the ground and you need to find the time to say, you know what, these experiences, I'm just open to whatever they are, good or bad, I know I'm gonna have me and I'll run through it and I'll figure it out. And that was like the biggest change I think I found in my heart is that not just wishing and wanting better things and thinking everything was going to be rosy, but knowing that there's going to be shit times and I'm still going to be okay. Because again, my cup be full. Preach. So lastly, let's talk about all the changes I saw in my mind. <laughs> so it's hard to kind of summarize all of my mind in like a few points, but I'm going to break it down into like four big things that I noticed. Number one, those who know me and those who are knowing now, I am a very anxious person. It's something that I've found <laughs> and I've discovered and become more comfortable with that. I have anxieties and though I thought, oh my God, yoga and meditation, I'm going to have no anxieties ever. I'm going to be free as a bird. I'm a bird! No, 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 no. I still have all of those anxious thoughts. I still have those things. I probably will always have that for the rest of my life and that's okay. But now I feel like I am better equipped with this meditation kind of yoga tool belt <laughs> that I can navigate those rather than trying to just push them away and get them out of my mind. I know now to work through them and to kind of learn more about myself through my anxieties. Why is this coming up? Why am I thinking that? What is it really like? Let's get to the root of it. So I feel like, no, I don't, I'm not, you know, done with being anxious. It's something I'm always going to constantly have to work with, but I have better tools. And again, taking that time for myself and time to self-reflect has helped me to navigate all of those anxieties and all of those, you know, negative thought patterns that I've had. Number two, uh, I'm in school now. And so a huge change to my mind is I feel like I can actually sit and concentrate and be more focused more than ever before. Just coming back into school and, you know, having to be back in the patterns of like sitting in three hour lectures and reading and like being on my own to manage my time and manage my schoolwork. Yoga gave me that time to know when I needed to take care of myself, when I needed to take breaks, whether it was like a five minute meditation or doing honestly like a headstand for five minutes or taking a walk. I was equipped again with that information of like knowing how and when to take care of myself. And so when I could sit down and had to write and had to work, I felt like this new sense of focus and this new sense of like full concentration on that activity. Focus. And that really does come from very mindful centered yoga practices, but also meditation, just being in the moment and experiencing everything for what it is in that moment, not looking at the past, not stressing about the future, just being right there. And that has helped immensely with my concentration and my focus. Three, kind of going along with that, I feel like my creativity has just been unleashed. And I'm not saying I'm like a super creative person at that, I could almost feel my like brain relax 
<laughs> after a certain amount of time or after, you know, meditation and yoga, like I feel like my brain is just not completely clear, but just ready and settled. And because I don't have, it's not clouded with all those thoughts and anxieties and I took the time just to like refresh, hit the refresh button, I feel like then my creativity and my ideas aren't hindered by negative thoughts and being like, that's not good enough, that's it. I'm just able to be more free and more creative and have more out of the box ideas out of the box, out of the that have really helped in just life in doing this freaking vlog, which has been really great and super exciting in work, being able to bring new, exciting kind of creative ideas and have them actually be, you know, celebrated and not shut down, which of course is the negative self-talk I will have to myself. So I'm sure if you're already a creative person and you are finding some blocks taking the time to like meditate and taking the time to yourself to just stretch and do some yoga and feel good in your body and your mind, I absolutely think you'll you'll have some type of chain and some type of unleashing or unlocking of kind of your creative passages, we'll say. And four. Lastly, of course, in my mind, I have found that I am at a different resting pace. Like my resting heart beat or whatever was like, da, 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 and now I'm just like resting here I feel a little bit more calm, if you haven't noticed. Okay, calm. Like I said, I'm able to reflect and take the time to look in. So when it's my time to be out and be out in the world, I feel like I can see things better for what they really are. I can see, I can see. And not see them from my own biased shit colored glasses that I used to look at things from. And again, that comes with, you know, noticing that some things are going to be great, some things are going to be bad, but I feel like I am just more open and will notice little things. For example, I would bike to work on the same streets all the time and I would just be like in my head, you know, or with my headphones on, just biking, 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 I'm cold, man, biking, biking, biking. And I feel like after more and more times, you know, doing yoga and a few the months, those bike rides were like my fucking favorite. I would bike and I would be mindful and look around at like the beautiful place I live in. And from then I would notice the craziest things. Like I would notice that this street name was the same as one of my friends from back home. Or I would be looking up and notice like, oh my gosh, that's the shop that I've been trying to go to. I never knew where it was. It was on this bike ride the whole time, the whole time. The whole time, the, the whole time you would, the whole time. It was all of these things. Like I would make these new connections and be able to see all of these things that were always right in front of me, but I was just kind of blinded by my own thoughts and my own self just in my head all the time. And so it was so refreshing to feel like I could finally see and finally experience and be part of this life that I had here. I can see, I can see. So if I have to summarize everything in one, what I've learned from this year of doing my hour and doing meditation and yoga and having this practice, my first priority should always be self-care. <laughs> my first priority should always be myself because I'm all I've got. Preach. And it might sound selfish. I know a lot of my friends out there now are moms and it's all, I could not even imagine. It's hard to find that time. It's hard to carve out that time. I know, but your first priority should always be yourself because that's only only going to improve your relationships and your interaction. There's no outsider that can take care of yourself better than you. Let's be real. And you can quote me on that. But seriously, I, I learned that I come first and it might sound selfish, but you got to because putting myself first this whole year has given me and given my relationships and given my passions and my work. It's given everything a boost and I've noticed it and I want to tell more people i want to scream for the rooftops that like take care of yourself love your damn self because you are all you've got love yourself love other people so i hope this video has everybody like how do i start yoga oh my gosh candace you convinced me um and i'd say thank you you're welcome no but seriously if you're looking to start i am more than happy to provide you with all of the links of the meditation apps i've tried i've honestly kind of danced around with a few um and yoga with adrian i've tried some other ones but honestly she is just my girl obsess much 
but what I love about Yoga with Adrian and her channel, which is amazing, is she has videos from like five minutes to 50 minutes. And so if you're looking to start a practice, I really loved it because I didn't, I, I felt a little bit guilty if I was like, oh, let me just do a 10 minute. But if you only have 10 minutes, if you only have five minutes just to stretch, do it. She has like a 10 minute video for self care or she has like a 50 minute video for flexibility or whatever. Like, and she also, I love it. She has videos for like yoga for hangovers, <laughs> yoga for when you're sick, bedtime yoga, which I absolutely needed during jet lag and just kind of like trying to get my body relaxed enough to go to sleep. But just take that time whatever you have and build it into your schedule. Do it, you know, say you're going to have your coffee and meditate for three minutes. Start out small and maybe build with it. But any time that you take for yourself, I can't say it enough. It will come back to you. I promise you that. Be your best self. So I'll end it here. I know this is a longer one, but I'm super excited um, that my friends on Instagram it was a tight race between talking about my yoga journey and movies. Don't worry, movies is coming up next. Yay! Um, but I'm super excited you guys picked this topic. I've been wanting to talk about it for pretty much the whole year. So I'm really excited to hear what you guys think about it. And comment below if you have a yoga practice, a regular yoga practice, or if you've been thinking about starting one, maybe you stopped. and. Let's start a conversation. I want to hear more. And if you guys are interested, again, I'll put all the links below, but maybe I can do another video of kind of my review of the meditation apps or my favorite Yoga with Adrian videos because I just obsess. Obsess much. Or maybe do another one on like mudras, mantras, chakras. Oh my. <laughs> I don't know. And as always, remember to subscribe so you can see when I actually post. I've been pretty good with posting on Wednesdays. Um, and like this video if you are enjoying this more specific topic. Um, and if you want to kind of be more in the conversation about what I'm talking about week to week, you should follow me on Instagram because also you get to see all the stupid things that I post just day to day. Um, but then I think I'm going to start asking and doing little polls of like what people want to hear me talk about. So follow me there. So I will leave you with one of my favorite mantras um, that's also from Yoga with Adrian, and I use it anytime I'm feeling stuck or overwhelmed or just unsure about the future, and it is, all is as it should be. Namaste, and see you next time on What's New with Candy Lou Who.